Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Today we're gonna to be modifying the gauge cluster on this one series BMW. This is what we're gonna be installing on the car. I covered this on my A90, but I'm revisiting it on this car. We're gonna go white LED conversion, bringing the steering column all the way out and down, going after these two T10s. Grabbing the cluster, you wanna pull it forward and down, and then pull it out. So you're gonna lift up the cable management on the back of the cluster. And you have a cam lock style connector so we can get this out of the car. So there's no screws that hold the front bezel in place. You just kind of have to lift up on these clips here. And by the way, you don't have to worry about disconnecting your battery for this job. It's not gonna mess anything up. So that's gonna pull this part out of the way. We'll figure out the orientation of these after. We're gonna kind of gently place them on after we put the new gauge faces in. But get yourself a plastic trim tool, get behind it and lift. These just lift out very easy on this. On the E90, they were adhered. They kind of just get held on the side. So I actually saw a video by Thick Whips about these and figured I'd try it. I've already covered this in detail. My E90 is similar, but at the same time, I'm trying to put out higher quality videos on the one series. So not affiliated. I will put a link in the description if you guys are interested. So when you get these, it will have this uh, backing paper on the back. They have different options. You'll be able to choose different color schemes. This is kind of like the 1M, but it's blue to match the car. You don't have to get the M logo. I just did it because it's an M light already. It already has the M Sport package and M logos all over it. And you can choose to have kilometers in here or just have a cleaner look in miles an hour. So I went for that. They'll custom make it for you when you place the order. So they're kind of like they're made to order. So that's what most of you guys would do and be done with it. But what I'm gonna do is try to make the needles red and we're gonna make the backlights white. Okay, so I found a good solution for red. It's just uh, my daughter's art marker. That actually looks pretty good. Okay, so I'm not committed to this now. I'm gonna take them back off so we can work on the LEDs, but those are done. So taking these off. You wanna to get to the circuit board. And to get to that, you just basically go inside here and release some clips around the connector. Now we'll take the board out of here. This design's slightly different than the E90. So we're gonna back this out. Take this out. So different design. So what happens is light gets diffused through here. So it takes the light of these three LEDs and this one over here, which are orange, to light up the needles and this whole ring. On the E90, there were six, I only see four here, but I'll get started at removing them. These have a little notch right here to show you which side should be positive. So you just basically wanna put a line beside it where you see the notch to make the notch face your little dot or line. So they're laid out the same way, so you can just do one side and it'll be the same on the other. So I have the following LEDs. I'll put a link in the description if I can find them. They're from many years ago, but they're still gonna work. So what I'll do is I'll lay down a little bit of solder in preparation for them. Not pretty, but it got the job done. So generally speaking on my channel, I used to always show the cheapest way to do things, DIY budget friendly. Now I'm gonna show what would be ideal in my mind, which would be like something like this, using the hot air gun to remove the LED concentrating heat at around 400 degrees Celsius to remove it, being sure not to have too much air pressure so you don't blow other components off. Let's go ahead and do it quickly now. Now just to be safe, I can just plug this in just like this and see if they light up and if they're set up properly. So there's my confirmation. I got a good connection to them. They're very bright compared to those. Those are pure orange. And these are orange as well, but they can switch to red and yellow depending on what type of output's required. But there's my confirmation that I have good connection and there's a difference in terms of colors. So that's what happens when you put the diffuser on there versus that. So with that confirmation, I'll carry on. Now 
know if you can make it out, but all the LEDs are working, and that's what we want. Before I proceed any further, I'll reconnect that to make sure that the LCD displays. To verify the LCD lit up. Now we're back to this point. Lay the needle in there loosely. Let's go see how to whack the that. Something to consider when you use a hot air station, the plastic around the metal piece that drives the needle got a little bit warm and it caused the fuel to stick. So be mindful of that. It did save a lot of time to use that, but if you want to avoid that potential, you could just use regular soldering iron. I've done that in the past. So now I've loosely placed them on. So what you should do is take note of where your fuel is at, but worst case, you can put key on and back off and then put it to the zero point. So things are sitting about where you'd want them to. The fuel side tends to be a little bit lower than the bottom line. Everything else is right at the white line. The fuel adjusted, that's what we want to see. So I'm going to do a gauge test now. Okay, I'm going to initiate a gauge test now. Key off. Hold this down. Tap it once. Okay, I test. Press and hold. Now we want to see that the range is realistic. So I consider that dialed in, I'm going to push these flat down. We're good to go. I had that pressed a little bit too far down, so it's touching and causing resistance. Now I know we're ready to put the copper back on. So if you want to test the gauge sweep, you'll hold this down, put the key in, tap it once. It says KI test. Let it sit for a second and tap it. It'll sweep through everything and make sure everything's good to go. So here's a close up of that. I'm seeing some glare and reflection, but that doesn't really show in real life. It's less than what you're seeing, but overall, I'm pretty happy with the look, and I think the blue matches the car nicely. And as I was saying, because it doesn't have the cruise control on the outside and uh, the variable uh, RPMs, they can just stick this on. It doesn't have to be adhered to stay in place. And then I think because of the lack of adhesive, they need less LEDs to get the same amount of brightness. So really, this is pretty easy compared to an E90. So if you want to go with the white LEDs, it's not so bad. All right, guys, that'll conclude this video showing you how to convert your gauges on a one series, including the white LED conversion. I'll put a link in the description for the LEDs and the gauge faces. If this is the first video you're catching on mind, please consider subscribing. If you liked it, please give it a like, so rain car. Thanks for watching.